right now. Why don't we bring in our NFL insider, Jay Glazer, to really take us behind the scenes, Jay, about what was going on inside the locker room. I wonder, while all this was playing out, what were the Raider players thinking? Look, Raider players personally loved Antonio Brown. Absolutely loved him. But many of them thought he never really wanted to be there in the first place. Even when things were starting to go a little bit better, like on Friday when he apologized to the team, there are many in there that thought, nah, something else is going to happen. The other shoe is going to drop. He's going to end up getting himself out of here. That's obviously what happened. Uh, one player said to me, we kind of just got A-B fatigue. Now, Pittsburgh Steelers, when I talked to some of them, they said, Mike Tomlin should get the Nobel Peace Prize. We've been dealing with that for years, and we kept it under wraps. Nobody had any idea until now. Can he retroactively get coach of the year for that or something? <laughs> All right, look, we know how this played out. In the end, the Raiders wind up releasing him. Right. But step by step, how did it happen? Look, so here's what nobody knows. That on Thursday, they made the decision, we're done. So they very quietly started calling around other teams trying to trade Antonio Brown. But because of the soap opera and because of the guarantees in his contract, they couldn't really get a taker. On Saturday, they finally released him. His agent, Drew Rosenhaus, told me there were three teams heavily involved, including the Patriots. There is a, one team I know of that Antonio Brown was actually on the phone with their head coach 15 minutes before he signed with the Patriots. All right, so he winds up signing with right. New England. What is everyone around the league saying about that, though? It's like an Oliver Stone movie. Yeah. This is not me saying this. Okay, let's be clear here, okay? <laughs> but I'm pushing the blame elsewhere. But everybody you talk to inside the NFL, whether it's executives, coaches, players, they're all saying, this is totally orchestrated by the Patriots and Antonio Brown. It's been in the works forever. Again, I'm not saying it, but everybody else completely believes it. If he is, he's the greatest <laughs> actor in the history of mankind. Yeah. He needs I mean, a Broadway show. Yeah, there, there's something weird in this whole situation. Let me ask you how, I mean, you're a Raider icon, you're in the Hall of Fame. Everybody knows you if, if being affiliated with that team. When you look at it from the Raiders' standpoint, what could they have done differently to avoid getting to this point? Well, that's easy. You know, I, I think it's the classic case of temptation, uh, of talent outweighing character issues. And I, and I think in, in some ways, John, I think, has got a lot of Father Peter in him. He thinks he can save or reach every player. And this guy was beyond his reach. They tried to accommodate this guy time and time again over the, over the process of signing him through training camp, the helmet, the, the, the blisters, uh, the practices, the walkthroughs, all of that. And at the end of the day, I think they came to the realization that He's a cancer on our football team. We need to get him out because he's a he's a team destroyer, I believe. Yeah. And and Mike Tomlin should be the UN ambassador <laughs> yeah. for what he did in Pittsburgh, keeping a lid on. That. I think when the, he was viewed as a team cancer, as being disrespectful and as being disloyal. He is the kind of player I would never, ever want to play for. I would not want him on the team. I do not like people like this. And, it's, and I, too, like a lot of people. I was sitting with Jimmy last night watching college game when it came across the little, and I said to Jimmy, I said, how does this happen so rapidly? It just seems like, and everybody's right, it seems like it was already in the making. Maybe it was, maybe it was. Well, you know, I'm, I'm like this. When somebody showed you who they are, then believe him. He's shown us who he, who he is. You talked about, you know, beyond reach. He was beyond reach in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. He's beyond reach with Oakland, uh, with L.A., with the Raiders. Now he's going to, to the Patriots where you think all of a sudden somebody's going to be able to reach him. I would love to see it because he's a talented player. But when, they're, when you start looking at where you've been and all the trouble that you caused and you're blaming everyone else, you need to look at yourself. And you, everything is a social media um, um, culture. Everything, he tapes everything, puts everything, he happened to have a camera there. When, oh, they release me. In the locker room with a camera when the coach is giving a speech in Pittsburgh. It's just, it's, if to me, you're going to go to a team now, you're not going to get away with any of that. Here's a guy, all the, the attention needs to be on him. Can he play on a team where it's about unselfish winning? You don't have a big game where we don't really make it see a flash out of you in three weeks. Can he handle not What's being the a focal under, point Mike? of a team? Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't like bad behavior being rewarded. And that's yeah. what's happened here. And sometimes talent, you know, they get away with it, you know, because of their talent. Now, I think we're all in agreement. This guy is a knucklehead, you know. And, you know, hey... It wasn't a fit in Oakland, but it wasn't a fit in a Super Bowl organization like the, the Steelers. And everybody's comparing it to, well, Randy Moss going to the Patriots. Well, Chad Johnson and Hainsworth, they also went to the Patriots. There's no guarantee this is going to work out. All right, so let me ask you this then here. As we sit here, obviously he's starting the year, the year with the New England Patriots. How many of you, raise your hand, think he will finish the year with the Patriots without being suspended or any incidents happening at all? I'm any the, only, I'm, I'm oh, the only guy on this set that's never gambled in Las Vegas. I would bet 
thousands on that. Thousands. I think there's got to be something. Yeah. I think he likes turmoil. Keeps him motivated. Raise my hand to that. <laughs>